Right now at 5, a day after scrutiny over the Valley Isles emergency sirens. Do you regret not sounding the sirens? I, I do not. Maui's emergency management chief resigns. The first lawsuit is filed in the Kula Brush Fire. We were asked by a, a number of mainland firms to get involved. A new chapter for survivors as more evacuees move from shelters into hotels. Uh, as we work through this together as a community uh, to build back. And businesses still standing in Lahaina struggle to stay open. We got stuck on that side of the island and found out we're not coming back. So even if we sounded the siren, it would not have saved those people on the, on the mountainside. First of five, the head of Maui's emergency management agency is stepping down a day after defending his decision to not sound the sirens as flames raged into Lahaina. In his official resignation today, he cited health reasons. Maui Mayor Richard Bisson says he will replace Andaya as soon as possible because of the gravity of the crisis. Meantime, the death toll from the fires remains at 111 lives lost. Governor Josh Green says 45 percent of the burn area has been searched. 41 rescue dogs are now helping with the operation, as well as nearly 200 search and rescue personnel. The Lahaina fire is 89% contained. The upcountry fire has been broken down into two areas, with the Olinda fire at 85% containment and the Kula fire 80% contained. Hawaii's attorney general is hiring a third party to investigate the state and county's response to Maui's wildfires. AG Ann Lopez says having an independent organization do the review will ensure accountability and transparency. Governor Green says the information collected will be used to improve emergency preparedness going forward. The investigation will most likely take months. And legal troubles continue to mount for Hawaiian Electric in the wake of the Maui wildfires. At least four lawsuits are pending over the deadly Lahaina fire, which may have been caused by fallen electric lines near Lahaina Luna Road. Today, the first lawsuit over the upcountry fires was filed by retired Judge Shackley Raffetto, whose Kula home was destroyed Tuesday. Attorney Rick Fried said a tree blown on power lines started the fire, and he cited HECO's prior promises to reduce wildfire risks and decision last week not to power down threatened lines. But it seems pretty clear that had they powered off or down in selected areas, that the fires uh, would have either been easy to take care of or wouldn't have occurred. The county has not confirmed electrical lines caused any fires. Hawaiian Electric has refused to comment on any of the pending lawsuits, saying they are concentrating on restoring power to the island. And with each day, we learn more about the victims of the Lahaina wildfire. The family of 71-year-old Melva Benjamin provided us with this photo. She is one of the five people who have been officially identified by police so far. And that list also includes 90-year-old Virginia Dofa and 79-year-old Alfredo Galinato. His family's home was also destroyed in the fire. MPD also identified longtime Maui musician 79-year-old Buddy Jantok, and they named 74-year-old Robert Dykeman. To help identify loved ones lost in the fire, people are urge to get DNA cheek swabs at the Family Assistance Center in Kahului. And at least three of the victims killed were residents at a senior housing complex called Hale Mahaolu Eono. The complex today provided an update saying four tenants are still missing, while four more tenants have not responded to phone calls. 22 tenants have been found safe. The complex says it never received an evacuation notice from the county. Identifying the victims of the fire is a slow process and may take months because of the conditions of the remains. Arlene Kawano reports on the FBI's role in helping to identify those who died in the fire. I'm told the FBI deployed five members of their evidence response team to Maui to assist. They're also asking for family members of those missing to help. More than 100 people are confirmed dead, but only a handful have been identified by Maui's medical examiner. And that process is not easy given the situation. The FBI is joining the efforts, providing a team to help with fingerprint and DNA analysis. 
The FBI maintains the largest repository of fingerprint data in the world, as well as the largest non-commercial DNA database. The FBI is asking for family members of the hundreds still missing to provide samples in cases where the bodies are not recognizable and other factors like fingerprints are not available. The problem that these teams run into, if I can be graphic, are the conditions of the deceased victims. Burned bodies present a host of unique challenges that you're not gonna find in a building collapse or a mass shooting. That's why advanced DNA identification technology is so critical to this process. The FBI is asking that loved ones who live on Maui go to the Hyatt Ka'anapali to get swabbed. If you don't live on Maui, go to our website, hawaiinewsnow.com, for more information. I'm Lynn Kawano, Hawaii News Now. Thank you very much, Lynn.